Solar powered electric cars. They just make so much sense, don't they? I mean, what could be better than zooming around in your zero emission vehicle than zooming around in your zero emission vehicle smug in the knowledge that it's being powered by free, clean, sun juice. We are avid supporters of solar powered electric cars here at Fully Charged Show and in recent months we have showcased three of the most exciting ones on the channel. The Aptera, the Lightyear Zero and the Sono Scion, all of which I was hugely impressed with, one of which I was mildly arrested in. But despite the huge amount of excitement surrounding their respective products, it seems that all is not well for this trio of sun seekers. Because in recent weeks all three companies have seemingly run into varying degrees of financial problems. Dutchmark Lightyear recently announced that it was shelving its very first project, the Zero, in order to focus on a higher volume, lower price electric car named the Two, but just days after announced that they were filing for bankruptcy. Sono Motors is currently running a campaign called Hashtag Save Scion in a bid to raise the 104.5 million euro they say they are still short of being able to put their wonderful utilitarian solar powered electric car into production. And even Aptera, whose three-wheel, two-seater efficiency dolphin absolutely blew me away last year, do seem to be struggling themselves. They recently announced an investment competition encouraging people who've placed reservations to inject as much money into the company as they are able in exchange for a bump up the long, long waiting list. Again, in a bid to raise funds to put their model into production. So what on earth is happening here? If there is an appetite for these products, and the enormous waiting lists suggest that there is, why are these companies struggling so much to make them happen? Why is it so damn hard to turn a bold new idea into a reality in the automotive industry? I'm Jack, and this is The Fully Charged Show. Like The Fully Charged Show? Then you will love our six live shows being held around the world in 2023, starting with Sydney, Australia on March the 11th and 12th. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty of what is going on at these three companies and why, just a quick caveat to say, I'm going to assume you know who these guys are, that you're familiar with their products. If you're not, do me a favor, pause this, go and watch our videos on Aptera, Lightyear, Sono, then come back. We don't have all day. I'm also keen to emphasize that the state of affairs at these three companies do differ slightly. They're not all in the exact same boat. They face their own unique challenges. I would also stress that none of these three companies are anywhere near going away anytime soon. It would appear that Lightyear and Sono are currently the furthest from being able to achieve their goal of putting their car into production. Uh, and, and it does look like they've fallen on some difficult times, but having spoken to people quite high up within both companies in recent weeks, I can assure you, these guys are fighting tooth and nail to make these cars a reality. They are nowhere near giving up. And we at Fully Charged support them 100%. We really like these guys. We want to see them succeed. We want to see these products on the road in the coming years because frankly, we just think the world would be a slightly better place with Apteras and Light Years and Sono Scions. So what is going on at these three companies? Well, at the heart of each company's struggles, I think it would be fair to say, is the issue of having attracted huge amounts of interest and attention, but not enough investment. All three of these companies have reservation lists as long as your arm. Sono claims 20,000 reservations for the Scion. Lightyear says it has 40,000 reservations, plus another 20,000 fleet reservations for the two, and Aptera another 40,000. But reservations, while encouraging, do not equate to cold, hard cash. To reserve an Aptera, for example, simply requires a $100 deposit, which is refundable. And in order to start a new car brand, you do need a big old pile of cold, hard cash. Launching a new car company is a staggeringly costly endeavor, and you need most of that money right at the very beginning. You've got to create a brand, establish a workforce, uh, go through the entire R&D process, establish supply chains, set up a production facility all before actually making any cars or making any money. And even if you opt to delegate manufacturing to an experienced existing manufacturer, as Lightyear and Sono both did, via Valmet Automotive, there are still a million and one very expensive things that you have to do before making a single buck. And that brings us to reason number one why it is so difficult to launch a new car brand. Investors don't like big risks 
or long waits. And any new car maker, regardless of how groundbreaking or world-beating the idea seems on paper, represents exactly that. These are high-risk investments, as evidenced by the very short list of successful new car brands over the last two decades, versus the very long list of unsuccessful ones. And not only that, not only will these investors not see their money back for a very long time, if indeed they do see their money back, but on top of all of that, the brands typically won't even be able to give an approximate estimation as to when that money will come back in because of the number of unforeseen hurdles involved in the process. This next couple of sentences is going to sound way cleverer than the rest of the script, and that's because Imogen wrote them. Engineering is an iterative process based on thousands and thousands of rounds of design, build, test iterations. Some of these will cause delays, and this is a normal and necessary part of the process, but it's something that big, fancy venture capital firms or investment banks or Reddit keyboard warrior day traders don't much like. Moreover, it's important to remember it's not just investors who are afraid to gamble on new car makers. Suppliers are just as risk averse. Establishing a new car brand also means establishing new supply chains. You need to establish relationships with tire brands, suspension manufacturers, battery makers. And even if you go in-house for lots of the componentry, like Aptera did, for example, you still need to obtain the materials required to build those components, which means setting up supply chains. And with all sorts of vital components essential to car manufacturing in very short supply at the moment, something that's been exacerbated by the situation in the Ukraine, these suppliers are much more inclined to continue to work with established brands who they know will be able to pay them in 18 months' time, as opposed to taking a chance on a new kid who might be gone tomorrow. Now, at this point, the cynics among you will be saying, yes, okay, we get it, it's hard, but it can be done. Tesla did it, Rivian seemingly have done it. So surely these companies have been making some mistakes, they've gotten some things wrong. Absolutely. I'm not going to presume to know everything about the inner workings of these companies, and I don't want to misspeak here, but even from where I'm sitting, I can see a few things that these companies potentially misjudged. I believe Lightyear went far too high-end with their first model, the Zero. I think €250,000 a pop was simply too high. and really limits the number of people that may well be able to buy into the brand. I think that the design of Aptera, specifically its 2.2-metre width, may limit its potential success in the eyes of some investors because it basically makes it too big to drive in most European cities. And I have no idea how Sono Motors found themselves short by so much money just as they were getting ready to commence production, but you have to assume that someone somewhere made some very overly optimistic calculations about how much time and money this project was going to cost. There is no question that these companies have made some errors along the way. All new companies do. But I would argue that the primary reason for their current struggles is out of their hands. They aren't struggling because they are solar car companies. They are struggling because they are automotive startups, which is a really hard thing to be, especially in the current economic climate, and especially when your idea is really bold and disruptive. So will these car brands survive? Will we ever see these incredible vehicles on the road? And what lessons are there to be learned here for someone considering launching their own maverick car brand? Well, naturally, the answers to those first two questions are, we don't know. It's unclear at this time what the future holds for Lightyear, Actually, we have an update on this because since recording this, Lightyear has announced that it will found an entirely new company to focus on building the more affordable Lightyear 2 and says that it has raised enough money to create a solid capital base for said company. Woo. Sono and Aptera are having some really good success off their fundraising campaigns, which gives me hope both for their future and for humanity in general. And with any luck, we will see all three of these brands overcome their current adversity and bring these products to market. I truly, truly hope so. As for lessons for future car brand founders, well, number one, be mad, completely mad, because you'd have to be. Number two, be rich, incredibly rich. Or if you're not, perhaps focus on investors who A, appreciate the time and patience that it takes to make a new car, and B, appreciate the value in trying to save the planet. And I suppose you could argue that another takeaway from this is to not be too other with your product. If you design something too groundbreaking, too disruptive, then investors won't have any kind of frame of reference for it and it's going to scare them off. 
But I don't think that should be a takeaway here because we have a climate crisis on our hands and we need big, disruptive, bold ideas right now. We can't be playing it safe anymore. The reasonable person adapts themselves to the world. The unreasonable one persists to adapt the world to themselves. Therefore, all progress depends on the unreasonable person. Robert Llewellyn said that. That was George Bernard Shaw, actually. So here's to the unreasonable disruptors. We wish them every success. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have been, thank you for watching.